So here we go. Oh, there it is. The boogeyman and banks. You see that? You got it? We got it. Okay. Boogeyman and banks, take one. The point is that, spoiler alert, the boogeyman is not coming for the banks. You have Citigroup's earnings today. They were fine. When you look at trade concerns, mm -hmm. their trade business grew double digits. When you look at their World fixed income business was bad. Let me, let me finish here just for a second here because the, the big macro issues are. I'm are about trade. to yell cut to continue with the thing <laughs> but, here. But trade and economic growth, the corporate credit losses were almost nothing, five basis points. When it comes to the flatter yield curve, their core margin increased by 12 basis points. So these big macro concerns, ooh, the boogeyman's coming. Okay. They're going to take a bite out of Citigroup and the banks. It's not happening. You came here last time and you said they got to come. come Hell or high water, they have to cut expenses. Do whatever it takes. Those were your words, right? Whatever yes. it takes. Yes. Did they do enough? Because they did that. Well, look, they've made tremendous progress, and year over year, the revenues grew faster, or, or you know, expenses, you know, declined more. The relationship of revenues and expenses over the past year was positive. So that's a good, that's a good news. The bad news is they missed their efficiency target by 10 basis points, by about 80 or 90 They say they're still committed to improving that. But it's, it's moving in the right direction. Let's so you saw enough. You put them on notice last time. Did they perform better, good enough for you or no? Yes, they're, look, pull the lens back for a second. This, it's, as of four hours ago, it's official. Citigroup reported its first year since before the financial crisis with double digit returns and those returns are going up by 100 to 200 basis points at a time when the stock's trading below tangible book value. Done. End of story. So that's good enough for the stock. Good enough for me? Yes and no. Yes, because the efficiency is improving. No, because they missed their own target. And there was big news Friday, which was not covered enough. Value Act, the activist investor, that's right. now has an agreement with Citigroup management. Value Act, the activist investor, gets confidential information in return, Value Act supports Citigroup management. You know how long this agreement lasts? Hmm. Until December of this year. So who's on alert? Forget about me. You have an activist investor with a billion dollar investment alerting Citigroup management. Okay, this is the year to turn up that intensity. Make sure you keep improving efficiency. Make sure you keep improving returns. It's good enough for the stock to go much higher, but it's not good enough relative to their peers, and they're moving in that direction. Can you get to $82 on your price target with what they're doing now? Is it enough? Absolutely. We think the stock can double over the next four years, but if you have more aggressive action, such as with Value Act, we think that stock could dou double faster. So, Michael Corbett, sorry. No, no, no. Let me, sorry. Go, ahead. Sirach, go ahead. You had the first word out. Go. So, so when you look at Citi, right, I mean, Citi's a case because it's a real value stock in the financials. All the others are financials uh, are also value. Which are the next companies you think are going to do much better because of what you heard today at Citi? Is it J.P. Morgan tomorrow, Bank of America? What's going to kind of get this whole group out of this malaise that we're in? Well, I don't think, we don't think the boogeyman is coming for any of the largest banks. So put a blindfold on and buy the, the largest banks like Citigroup, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, you know, Morgan Stanley and some others out there. And we think they all outperformed this year. And so far, year to date, um, they're, they're coming back. But we think when earnings are done, two weeks from now, you're going to see that credit quality is just fine. That's the biggest issue with that. By the way, Wells Fargo Security's fixed income team is ranked number one uh, in Institutional Investor Magazine. <coughs> we just did a report with them. There's $15 trillion of bonds out there that say it's not late cycle. The bond market says things are fine. And remember, before the financial crisis, the bond market was many months before the equity market. Well, this time, the equity market's taken a false start, at least as it relates to banks. So credit quality's still good, cost control good, cap returns good. The bank stocks are just fine. The weakness is a weak top line. Fixed income trading was awful at Citigroup. You're going to see you're that. You're going to be bad at, at Goldman, at, right? We lowered our numbers in all the capital market players for weak fixed income markets, you, weak you, trading. You, you, but you know, you still have a two hundred thirty-five dollar price target on Goldman with an outperform. You need to change that. Uh, no, the stock's below tangible book value. There, there are issues. Uh, you have one MDB. It's that's like major a, issues, man. I mean, you know, it's not just issues, right? Well, like, at, we went on your show. We said we need. Um, the new CEO, David Solomon, had come out and talk. He's talking on the Wednesday earnings call. For the first time in, in Goldman's history, they're having the CEO on the earnings call. We're going to ask him all sorts of questions, or well, at least one or two that we get in there. And the question is, what's the spillover effect of 1MDB on business? What are his new targets? How is he changing the course of the firm? But below tangible book value, whether it's Goldman or Citigroup, seems like a no-brainer for us for the reward okay. versus the downside.